Okay, so as we are coming live on Facebook, I will just come on Facebook. Okay, there we go. We are live. So I'm just going to get the live up. I'll go away, Facebook. It always comes up with a load of messages. I'm going to get the live up on my phone so that when any comments come through that I'll be able to see them as you're hopping on say hello the comments don't show on my laptop so I put it on my phone so I can see them come up sorry as soon as I went to click live a hair tickle me very annoying anyway that's not what I'm here to talk to you about so we are going to be talking about chakras now I've been having lots of conversations with lots of you about chakras recently what they are how they work how balanced your chakras are and i thought this workshop would be really useful beneficial for you to be able to get to grips with understanding what they actually are because it's all very well kind of exploring chakras but if you don't really know what they are then it can lead to a lot of misunderstanding oh if she knows now so was a sign of spirit around in it so in this session i want to really explore what chakras are how they work what the differences are hi mandy how you can identify the seven main chakras we're going to focus on the seven main there are some extra ones but i want to focus on the main seven because they're the ones you're going to most commonly hear and in hearing about them then you'll be like, oh, okay, I know what that is now. Now, some of you will know a little bit about chakras and we will get to that. So what I want you to do, first of all, as you're hopping on, is to tell me a colour of your outfit. So as you can see, I'm wearing a black top. So it doesn't have to be your whole outfit. It could just be the most predominant colour. I want you to drop that in the comments because colours as you're going to see relate to chakras and they then tell you a lot about what's going on because all the colours have symbolisms and understandings and some of you will know this already and you all come from different angles if you see me looking this way i'm just looking at the comments on my phone as they come through hi kerry green okay perfect interesting you had green and the session we had earlier but we'll get to that so Drop in the comments like Kerry has about the colour of your clothes. And like I say, when we go through the chakras, you'll start recognising those colours. Listen out for the colour that you've written in the comments and start relating. Mandy, love it. Vibrant pink. Gorgeous. One of my favourite colours. And you'll start recognising the colours and the symbolism of that colour. Mandy, you might remember this from when you used to come to my in-person workshops. Hi, Kerry. Nice to see you. So, because there's such a... A wide variety of you and you all know differing things about chakras I want you to rate it for me so on a scale of 1 to 10 10 being the highest as in yes I'm a chakra master one being like I don't even really know what that means I want you to put a rating 1 to 10 in the comments just to let me know where you're all at like how advanced you are you might all be the chakra masters and then we can change the conversation slightly but if you let me know in the comments as we go through this will then give me a good idea of where you're sitting at when it comes to chakras and understanding them so they they really relate to eastern medicine and they indicate vortexes of energy that is what a chakra is so basically it's a big junction four four five two three okay perfect so we're going to start at the beginning and explain what they are so you by the time you leave this session you're going to be like okay i can name the seven i know what they all stand for i know the color that relates to them and have a good foundational understanding so the chakras are big junctions where energy lines crisscross against your across your body so they are the biggest points of energy meeting so when you work on a chakra because so much energy is moving through that space that's why energy healing often focuses on them so whether you have crystal healing or reiki or any number of healings nowadays there's so many nowadays like when i first started there wasn't that many there were more than those two but there weren't that many um 
you often find that chakras are a big part of energy work and that is because there's so much energy moving through that space so it's a really good way of understanding the energy body getting to grips with what parts of the physical being it relates to what parts of the mental self the emotional the spiritual and understanding different parts of you because when you look at your health from a holistic perspective and that's what chakras are doing they're looking at your energy then you explore all elements of you. So physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. No worries, Bronwyn. So, so far, I just asked everyone to, one, tell me what colour clothing they're wearing, the main colour, and two, rate on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being not really at all, how much they know about chakras, just to get us started. You haven't missed much yet. So when you are looking after yourself your own health and well-being and you're considering the holistic method so rather than go into a doctor say and saying like i've hurt my foot hey sapphire um i've hurt my foot and it's really sore and then the foot is the only thing that's focused on not in relation maybe in relation to the leg the hip the the spine but not in relation to it might be something in your crown chakra that's coming out in your foot when you look at grey and two, okay, perfect. When you look at chakras and you understand them and what they're representing, and even by looking at the colour of clothing that you're wearing and what that's then going to say, you can start to understand yourself in different ways. And I'm all about giving you lots of ways to understand yourself because you think all the lessons about the moon and crystals and manifesting, it's all about giving you tools to understand yourself better, to understand how to kind of navigate life and all that it throws at you and maintain a level of equilibrium which can be quite difficult uh there was a question so sapphire the question about the numbers was rate on a scale of one to ten ten being the highest how much you feel you know about chakras so ten would be like yes i'm a chakra master one would be i really don't really even know what they are so just on that level where do you sit in there hi ali so each chakra associates with various parts of the body and colours and crystals, right? And you can understand the crystals by recognising the colours. And as much as I adore crystals, and those of you who know me a long time know that crystals are my thing, I'm not here to talk to you about crystals, I'm here specifically to talk to you about chakras. And I want to give you a good understanding of what all the chakras are, what their colours are, what they represent, and what parts of the body they relate to. So if you haven't already, I'm gonna give you a second, go and grab a notepad, a pen, some paper, because you might wanna make some notes, your laptop, whatever, something where you can make notes. Because if you're thinking you really wanna start absorbing this information about chakras, because you'll hear that word a lot, if you're in this realm and you're in this group, so you're in the realm in different places of holistic health and understanding about your well-being from an energetic perspective as well as a physical and a mental then when you get to grips with chakras it really really starts to go oh okay i got that now so grab a pen and paper if you haven't already i'm going to start at our root chakra so if you imagine your body and your body is in this big ball of energy it's always in this ball of energy you always you sleep in it you move around in it you go in the shower in it like it never goes away because it's always there that is your energy it expands outwardly so at least arm's length so when you enter into a room your energy is the first thing that enters into that space yes this will be available on replay bathing suit love it black and orange perfect i'm just seeing the comments come through now so your energy is the first thing to enter into a room. That is why, and I've said this multiple times over the years in different places, that is why when you meet someone, if you're in a space of heart-centered energy, you're quite grounded, you're awakened effectively, and you're connected to yourself, not in a space of ego, right? That's a different thing. When you meet someone, you go, mm, uh, uh, whatever the facial expression is, but there's something about that person, you're just like, mm, not really sure about this. I guarantee you probably the conscious mind will come in and go hang on you can't judge a person based on not knowing anything about them you've got to give everyone a chance and I have a perfect example of this so in my when I in the last job that I had when I worked for someone else back in the day eight years ago a long time ago 
but it was about nine, ten years ago. I met this girl, so well, woman, and um, she was the closest one to my age, and I was single, she was single, so it was like, you know, let's hang, let's go out, whatever, let's have fun. Um, and I'd heard about it before I met her. I'd been warned about her before I met her, just as in like, just be wary because she's a bit immature. Was what I'd heard. But I'm like, hey, you know what? Like, everyone else is kind of married off and settled down. Like, I just want to go out and have fun with friends. Met her. I swear, I kid you not. My first thing was like, oh, no, 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 no. Something in me was like just repeating no, 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 no. And I did that thing. I went, no, don't be rude. Don't judge a book on its cover. Get to know the person. Give the person a chance. She turned into one of the biggest drains I've ever met in my life that went on for like two years that cost friendships nearly my relationship there's lots of shitty shit that came with it and that not every instance is going to turn into this but listening to those signals you get you could call it your gut your intuition your instinct your inner knowing your sixth sense whatever you want to call it that is your energy signaling to you and it's called something else like a sixth sense because you don't smell it, you don't see it, you don't hear it, you don't touch it. You could feel it, but not in a way like I can feel my clothes on me. And it's that knowing of stuff that you don't know where you know the stuff from. Like you might be driving a route you always drive and then you randomly turn left. Like turn left and I went right. My driving instructor actually wrote an L on my left hand because I kept doing that. Turn left when normally you would go right. And you might think, hang on, this isn't my route. But you follow it because you just know you need to turn left there. And it's about being, it's about living life in a space where you can listen to those signs and those signals and hear them because that is your energy talking to you. So your energy's already picked up that there's going to be a low ask you that way, so go that way. Or there might be something going on down that you want to avoid to go that way. Or this person isn't going to be good for you, so just avoid all the stress of it. You know, so it's about listening to the signals that may go against all the the socialization you've had and the expectations you have on yourself or others have on you, whatever it is. But it's about being able to hear and feel those signals. And you can. It's like a practice. It's like any skill. The more you do it, the more you'll be able to sense it. And understanding the chakras is a really good way to do it because you can start to sense into them. When you can hear and listen to these signals and feel them or see them, whatever kind of sense word you want to use for it hopefully my signal is right tell me guys if it is going dodgy i love that gut is your second brain so true and it has lots of words right gut intuition all the words that we said when you can sense those and tap into those then you're giving yourself shortcuts it's like oh there's a shortcut there oh there's a shortcut there let's just focus on the shortcuts rather than get, getting caught up in the long way round. so root chakra Imagine you're in this energy bubble. Now your chakras are within your, very close to your physical self, within your physical realm, but they expand out because you're soaking energy in from outside. This is why it's really important that you are aware and consciously pick who you spend time with, whether that is in person, online, what things, so like say media, you know, social media, TV, radio, plays shows whatever stuff you invest your time and energy in what you focus on it's all about intention and awareness so what say for example you love like the real housewives um series yeah i'm a lover of real housewives or like night day fiance love night day fiance it's full of drama it's full of trial and tribulations now it's cool to watch but it's cool to keep it in that tablet i'm putting on my tablet so watch it on my tablet it's cool to keep it in that tablet and not bring it home not bring those sensations home because you're soaking up some of that energy that stress that frustration that disappointment that irritation those people are feeling so it's important to be aware of who you are tapping into what kind of energy you're allowing around you so you're in your energy bubble your chakras are going to go through where they are placed on your body and they reach out of your energy bubble and they soak energy in and so it's going to be floating around in your energy bubble. So your root chakra, if you, where your perineum is, is where your root is based and it faces down. So the energy is grounded into the ground. That is why when I give you rituals to do, I want you to be barefoot on something natural, whether that's earth, sand, mud, grass, something natural, not man-made like concrete or decking or anything like that. 
so that you are rooting your energy through your root but also through your feet and the chakras in your feet so that your energy is going back into mother nature she's giving you that security that stability that grounding because the root chakra also known as the base chakra the same chakra two names for it i don't know why is all about security and stability it is your survival center so it is hi melanie it's all about you figuring out how to survive now it's red in color so physically it covers the areas of your hips your bum your legs your feet the base of your spine your blood and your circulation so if you have issues in any of those areas then be aware of those because there could be something going on at your root and your base chakra mentally it's associated with assertiveness self-confidence a lust and passion for life a zest of living now you can get stuck in a chakra but you can also be lacking in energy in a chakra so if you're stuck in your root chakra it can come out as being quite materialistic like you love the material things in life now we all do to an extent but we know when it's too much and it's not balanced if you lack energy in your root chakra it can come out as you being a bit airy fairy your two your energy is too up here and not rooted enough now there's always going to be a fear that blocks everything we are humans and fears block chakras too so the fear that blocks your root chakra sorry what blocks your root chakra is fear itself so when you feel fearful of anything you block your root chakra from the energy flowing freely so it could mean that energy gets stuck or energy can't come in to replenish because you if you think about your energy in a so if you imagine your chakra is like a ball and it's just this spinning ball of color and this spinning ball of red and you want energy to flow through it really easily you want energy flowing like water flows you, you're not going to drink stagnant water right it's like i said this recently it's like with dogs you don't want them to be drinking stagnant water if they're going to go into something and drink it you want it to be water that runs because then all sorts of bacteria and stuff can sit in that your energy wants to flow as well because when it stagnates that's when you get problems so if you're feeling like you've got problems with your hips or your bum or your circulation or your blood then there could be some blockage in your root chakra that needs to be energetically released or if you feel that you are a bit materialistic then it could be you're stuck in your root and you need to shift your energy upwards through your other chakras so you're not too stuck in that root and really like grounded and probably stubborn could come into this not that materialistic and stubborn go together i'm just saying that real like nope i'm staying here like digging your feet in the mud that kind of thing but in reality so it's about that free flow of energy it being in movement energy is always in movement but if it gets stuck then it can cause problems so a lack of energy in your root can show up as circulation problems um, an inability to maintain energy levels like your energy dips really easily an inability to actually experience life and have enthusiasm for life or maybe you just feel really vulnerable so they're like if you're thinking oh yeah that's me oh yeah i recognize myself in that just make a note of that if you have too much root energy you could be hyperactive you might have inflammation in the body you might feel quite angry very fearful as we've said perhaps confused and have mood swings so it's about balance always and flow when it comes to energy and your chakras because when you have balance in your root chakra then you have health and wellness of all of these aspects and the aim is always to regulate the energy in each chakra and this can be done through energy work and energy work can take different forms right so it could be i'm going to tell you about the chakra scan later but some of you have had chakra scans with me it could be crystals it could be reiki it could be any number of things so for those of you that are thinking okay i recognize some symptoms that i live with in the root chakra description i want you to drop root in the comments because i want you to start making the links now between you and what i'm telling you because then you're going to be giving yourself more information to then move forward with to go okay well i know that i've got some circulation problems so let me work a bit on my root chakra and there's lots of ways of doing that and once you know that you can do that then that gives you that opportunity that that next tool in your toolbox to feel good to feel better so your next chakra is your sacral chakra i'll let you put if those of you that want to put it or it relates to put root in the comments while i go on to sacral so if you put your palm on your belly your thumb 
rests over the top of your belly button where your palm sits is where your sacral chakra is so this is your emotional center it's all about energy and vitality if you rub your belly you're naturally giving yourself your energy your energy body when i say energy more energy it's orange in color so this chakra gets rid of blockages that stop the growth of your energy and you also want some energy stored in there for when you need it you know when those days when you're just a bit like oh you need some energy if you find you're very lacking in energy often then really focus on your sacral because you want to build up a a kind of storage unit in there of some energy because you can't have too much sacral energy weirdly that's the only chakra that you kind of can't have too much of now root i know okay i love it that you're starting to see it sapphire right so bear that in mind we can work on that bromine root yes definitely i think there's a lot of root there's a lot of shifts in you at the moment and the root so physically your sacral chakra covers your lower abdomen so your kidneys your large intestine your reproductive organs really key in this fertility is all when your sacral sexual pleasure sexual desire it's all in your sacral mental associations are positivity and creativity so if you feel like you lack creativity or you find it really hard to be positive you need to be boosting this sacral chakra so to get stuck in it can be to become a bit self-indulgent so you know like there's all it's all good to be aware of yourself give yourself time and attention and self-love but self-indulgent is a different thing so that is when there you can be stuck in it not that there's too much of it but you're stuck in there so you're not spreading your energy balanced you want a balance of energy through all of your chakras so you're balanced with balance comes health and well-being and it then doesn't allow for the gaps for the stuff to come in to take you out of balance to stagnate and then cause the problems to be lacking in sacral energy will show as potentially restricted feelings so feeling like you don't know how to express yourself or you you feel like you feel a way but you're not really sure what how to sort of term it or express it digestive disorders because it covers that area a lack of focus a lack of vitality being stuck in the past holding on to the old memories you know for someone that always talks about the good old days and don't live in the now then you can be lacking in sacral energy like i said it's unlikely you're going to have an excess of sacral energy because it is very positive so even if you did you'd just be buzzing all the time and again you want to balance because it makes your life easier it makes tasks easier progress in life flows smoother and there is a freedom really to enjoy the moment and be in that moment like I said, if you feel like you can't be in the moment because you're often in the past, then focus on building up your sacral energy. So if you're going, oh, yes, recognize myself in some of these things, drop sacral for me in the comments. Sacral is S-A-C-R-A-L, if you're not sure how to spell it. So then the next chakra is solar plexus. So your solar plexus is under your breastbone. So if you dig in there, that is yellow in color. And it is your power center. It's all about confidence and wealth. It's about having order both inside and outside. So one of the laws of the universe, what is in is also out. So your your reality, your life, I was saying this to one of you the other day, your life is a reflection of what goes on in here. So it's the balance between the two. Physically, your solar plexus chakra covers your upper abdomen now. Your digestive system again because it's going to cover that part as well your immune system your skin and your nervous system so mental associations of it and there are positive and then there are negative ones so positive ones are joy happiness contentment negative ones can be high and do carry love it so cool negative ones can be fear worry anxiety panic so if you suffer with anxiety you suffer with panic attacks you worry a lot again you fear was here fear was also at root fear causes all sorts of problems so it's about recognizing oh, okay because if i have these sensations whether it's a mental thing or a physical thing or an emotional thing being able to pinpoint where it is in the chakra system anger 
dominance and aggression block your power center they take away your power because you get caught up in the ego that isn't a judgy thing to say i'm just saying that, like i said to you there's a difference between being heart centered being grounded in flow aligned with yourself and coming from that place and there's a difference between being connected to ego and being fueled by that if you get stuck in your solar plexus energy you can come across as a control freak a bully or dominant and you might know people like that, right? They're probably really stuck in their solar plexus energy. If you have a lack of solar plexus energy, you could feel weak and feel like you're easy to manipulate. So again, it's always about the balance and the flow. So you might be experiencing stress, indigestion, insomnia, panic attacks like I mentioned, headaches, muscle tension, skin problems, nervous disorders, allergic reactions, food intolerances, tension, confusion. All of those things relate into the solar plexus. Having too much solar plexus energy can lead to you feeling like you have to really overanalyze things. You might be really fussy, a bit narrow-minded, lacking in tolerance. So again, it's all about the balance so that you can feel happy and in harmony with yourself with your life with your surroundings and be able to recognize what's useful to you and what isn't so if you feel like some of these are going ding 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 this is me then i want you to drop solar in the comments for me sapphire i've been told i need to get my chakras aligned have had two sessions i need to have more i think okay perfect well you're going to love what i tell you at the end then so listen out for that so the fourth chakra then is your heart so you will find at your chest is all about love and acceptance growth and harmony now there's two colors associated with the heart it's pink and green so love and acceptance is all the pink the green is growth and harmony it is the unconditional love center remember unconditional love starts with you first and then outwardly often love is associated with other people so it's like we need to love other people but actually when we recognize that we need to love ourselves first cliche but it's true and unconditionally you're going to know yourself the best of any person you ever meet on this planet you will always know yourself the best hi Yolanda Sapphire, I love it. I love that you like getting the connections. I love it when it's like, oh yeah, that's me. Okay, that makes sense now. It's all about life making more sense. That's what I want to give you. The opportunity for life to make more sense and you to go, oh, okay, cool. I can do this. I'm going to feel good. Perfect. So your heart covers your heart, your literal heart, your lungs, your arms, your hands, your chest. So mentally then, Rhiannon, okay, perfect. Mentally, it's expanding knowledge your own knowledge having innovation a freedom within the framework of routine discipline so feeling free feeling like you can live your life and feel creative and in flow you know when you're living from a heart place a lot of yogis live from a heart place and you can just sense it in their energy they're like cool and chill and you know it's that kind of vibe so too much heart energy can come out as you feeling like you must please others above yourself. Very common. A lack of heart energy. So you're in that, sorry, going back to that, pleasing others above yourselves. That's that you, you have so much to give. That you want to give, 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 and you forget to give to you first. Lacking in heart energy can show up as someone feeling jealous, getting caught up in jealousy holding grudges, finding it hard to forgive. Jealousy is what blocks the heart centre. So imbalances can show up as invasive illnesses, controversial but very interesting, abnormal growths, having a lack of control in your life, claustrophobia, feeling unfulfilled, feeling a need to be controlled or be in control, having a lack of self-discipline and being confused over who you are. And like I say, the two colours represent slightly different features. So the pink is all about compassion, unconditional love, healing, linking all things, recognising we're all connected. The green is all about growth, balance, harmony, a sense of freedom and that forward movement, letting go of the past and the pain. Balancing the heart gives you the chance to turn your thoughts into actions. 
it gives you a really strong self-image and self-love of course as a consequence it increases your tolerance it gives you more sympathy it gives you the opportunity to live as a loving caring heart-centered person that doesn't mean being walked over and doing too much for other people you can see that in what i've said to you about the heart it's the balance you're looking for so if you're like ding 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 i recognize myself in some of these symptoms i want you to put heart in the comments and these really are for you to go yes that's me because when you make those connections then you give yourself the opportunity to go right i know what i need to work on then your throat chakra is at the base of your throat is all about articulation and uniqueness it is your self-expression center so this is light blue or turquoise in color now physically your throat chakra covers of course your throat just reading sapphire's comment heart learn to have a bit of selfless love always trying to save the world but i forget myself right very common especially if you work in the industry of helping others easily forget yourself in it and it's so important to remember you so your throat covers your neck your throat your face your ears your nose your mouth it covers quite a lot on your throat mentally the connections are being expressive the ability to communicate effectively and express yourselves effectively so there's a difference being sort of there's a difference between just saying stuff and being heard and it being said in an effective way that's going to lead to something now if you have too much throat energy it can come out as being attention seeking so you'll recognize that in people no doubt a lack of throat energy comes out in the inability to express yourself or over expression without thinking being reactive or dramatic now we all have those moments but remember it's about what's the majority of the time what's the balance what we're looking at ali heart perfect kerry heart yes kerry heart we had that conversation with Brahman heart yes so lies and lack of integrity block this chakra so if you feel like you're not being true to yourself or those that you care about that is going to block this chakra down it's going to stop it being able to flow naturally with energy for you to bring energy in and release energy out when you have a lack of energy in this chakra you can get a lot of throat problems it's like sore throats you know swelling in the throat and the neck and potentially have a difficulty in communicating well definitely have a um, difficulty in communicating but it can come across as like everyday communication just conversation but it can also be artistically so if you're trying to be creative and there's a block like the writer's block it's here it's the throat it's the expression it's like oh no I'm going to sit on it instead and it's about opening that back up again if you get a lot of colds if you're very congested it's your throat so balance in this area helps you express and articulate your true wishes your true nature your true self demonstrating to the world to yourself your uniqueness and the wishes that you have for your life so if you're like yes i recognize myself in there i want you to drop throat in the comments so you can make that connection yes kerry definitely i can see the connections for sure so chakra six is your third eye so here this is also blue in color so the throat is like turquoise or light blue depending on the color systems then your third eye sometimes is purple but sometimes is indigo so like a really deep purpley blue or like a navy blue a deep blue it's all about you opening up and learning your intuition center your learning center about you opening up that third eye seeing with the unseen eye so physically it covers your head your eyes your face your forehead so like your upper head because your ears and everything were in your throat mentally it's all about clarity of mind intuition understanding capability so feeling capable and able to do things make decisions and things like that flow of understanding so being able to feel i love the throats that are coming through from when you feeling like you understand yourself and people around you things around you having empathy inspiration imagination being able to tap into these things now too much third eye chakra energy can seem like you lose grounding you're too now stuck in your head you know whereas we said with the root you can come across as airy fairy here you can come across as airy fairy as well because you're too stuck here maybe 
you're irrational you have a really strong imagination that actually could get to the point of being depressing and even hallucinating perhaps you're very cool and like aloof or emotionally detached that's when there's too much third eye chakra energy when that third eye is blocked and it's not releasing the energy because remember we want the flow then it, there can be too much if there's a lack of third eye energy so there again is a block but it's stopping the energy coming in then you might not be able to make decisions very easily you might need other people's help excessively like not just a bit but like all the time feel very confused feel depressed feel like you have lost your creativity find it really hard to learn that can be a lack of third eye chakra energy so the color blue is associated with clarity with restoring the flow of blocked energy blue is actually amazing for anti-inflammatory as well especially when it comes to crystals and it helps you learn so if you're recognizing yourself in this i want you to drop the third eye in the comments very interesting seeing those of you that are recognizing yourself and commenting as we go and then we have the crown chakra so the final chakra so we started at the bottom went up this is here so it's on top of your head and it's open so if you imagine it's open like this it sits on top of your head opens up because you pull the energy in from source mother nature god whatever your belief system is just energy science you pull your energy in through your crown then it spreads normally so your crown is all about peace and calm it is either purple or white in color depends on the particular imagery you're looking at it is your divine center so physically it's associated with your crown your head your skull your brain your pituitary and your pineal glands never say those words properly i love the third eye sapphire curry third eye coming through mentally it's connected to an awareness of imagination inspiration understanding sympathy for others connected to those around you now too much crown chakra energy can come across as having an inability to comprehend reality like you're too stuck in the the divine world or the the philosophical world and you're not got your feet grounded you remember you want the energy to be grounded and balanced the whole way through so you want the crown to be open but you want your root to be grounded too and everything in the middle you could be too much crown chakra energy again it could come across as extreme curiosity about life like to the point where it causes you problems feeling over intuitive and having hallucinations so it's about balancing it it's not about shutting it off it's about balancing it a lack of crown chakra energy can come can be experienced as feeling depressed having a lack of belief in there being anything higher than yourself being overly rationally minded now purple if we focus on the, on the crown being purple is a combination of two colors so it's the activating and dynamic red with the pacifying blue so it's a really powerful healing color that's why you see a lot of healing businesses are all about the purple i've got purple everything it's just a natural connection with the color and it energizes the spirit it joins opposites it helps your body deal with situations of imbalance and illness purple is very powerful it's probably why amethyst is such a powerful crystal because one of the ways that crystals are deemed well titled with their healing properties is because of their color there's lots of different ways but that's one of the ways so imbalances with your crown chakra can come across as sacrificing yourself for others having a lot of guilt being stuck in guilt a lot having really poor self-worth being judgmental of yourself and other people and switching off from reality like really wanting that escapism all the time we all want it sometimes but wanting it all the time if you recognize yourself in this then i want you to drop crown in the comments so as you can see as we work through the seven main chakras they tell a lot about your mental physical spiritual and emotional health and well-being they really help you identify issues and go oh okay that relates to that chakra so that gives you a bit of information at all then to go right well if i focus on balancing that chakra getting rid of any stagnation replenishing it with energy letting the energy flow then that's going to really start to support my well-being and you no doubt will see a shift in those symptoms discovering what your chakras are saying about you tells you a whole host of information about your whole being looking at your whole holistic self so the mental, the physical, the emotional, spiritual, everything, not just, like I said earlier, not just like the foot, but the whole thing. 
because I find the crown love it. So when you discover how balanced your chakras are and any blockages that you may have, and they will change from time to time because we're human. We are not living on top of a mountain chanting all day. If we were, our chakras would probably maintain quite a good balance all the time. We have a lot of stuff we deal with. Social media, TV, friends, family, neighbours, life, the road, the trains, the buses, everything. Everything's bombarding us all the damn time. Little things, a comment from someone, seeing something, can send your balance out of balance. Now, what is key is about building a really, really strong foundation with yourself and your energy so that you know how to rebalance regularly so that these things don't completely throw you off. Like I said, I'm all about giving you all the tools so that life doesn't throw you completely off balance. You're going, oh, okay, there's a bump. All right, let's deal with it. So that you can realign, so you can support yourself with whatever is going on. And that your energy then flows with ease and you maintain or regain, if you feel you're in an ill health position right now, your health and well-being. So, I want to know, how many of you are thinking, alright, so how do I know what my chakras are saying about me? I want you to drop a yes in the comments if you are thinking that very thing. some of you know this already some of you have had this already Ooh, 11 of you on with me love the angel numbers and that i have been offering free chakra scans for hmm, how long has it been six weeks gosh i don't even know how many i've done in that time and i'm gonna offer you all a free chakra scan if you would like one if you want one i want you to drop chakra in the comments now a chakra scan if you've had one with me before that's perfect, you can still drop it in. Yes, yes, Ali, Bronwyn. Still drop it in, we can do another one. Because a chakra scan uses my very clever, let me show you, little frequency scanning and healing device. This little baby. Tiny little thing, millions of frequencies that it can scan, that it can send out, very amazing. And I can, do a chakra scan on you which pinpoints not only the level of balance in all of your seven chakras and you see a graph of it as well so there's a lot of visual with the scan that it creates and it creates a pdf so you can read that too which i love because it gives you the visual to see and absorb it also brings up nine key points about your specific life so you individually so thoughts beliefs situations experiences that have been showing up in your energy whether they thank you kerry whether they are relevant right now, Kerry said they're great, I recommend it, the chakra scans. Whether the energy is right now, or it could be in the past, it could be some real deep-rooted stuff that goes back, way back. But it's about recognising those patterns, the stuff that's showing up, the imbalance in your energy and how it's then showing up in your life. And I promise you, you will be like, whoa, I do these every single day every day i'm always like whoa these scans really are amazing and at the end of the scan so what happens is you send me a selfie of you on the day that we're going to do it because your energy is red from the picture you send me sapphire of course you send me your email address as well and then i run the scan on my little device my device and the phone work together because i have an app that connects to the device that i put the picture into it then scans your energy, brings up a table of the chakras. So you might have seen it in my personal story. Sometimes I put my scans in there. So when I've done a scan of my chakras and what it shows. Like last week, I think it was, I did a scan and my solar or sacral, I can't remember, were really low. I did, a, I think it was sacral, a sacral frequency healing, which you can do as well. And then it shot up after that. I was amazed at the shift in like half an hour. So it will show you the graph, can I think of the word? And then it will create a PDF. In that PDF, it has the nine key points that are specific to you. So everyone is different. Everyone will get different things. If you have more than one, and some of you have had one, and you're gonna have one again, it potentially will say different things. If there are things that pop up again, we know that's a deeper rooted thing. Something that needs a bit more like edging out. But in those, it gives you great understanding of yourself, of patterns that show up in your life, of how, an energy block can impact you at a really deep level across years potentially in your life 
so it's really simple to do it literally takes two minutes then i email you the pdf give you a chance to read through it tell you how to understand it because there's a lot of information in there and then once you've done that i then send you the healing frequencies to balance your chakras so that you get the whole shebang in the scan so you get the scan to understand where your chakras are at right now and you also get the healing frequencies at the end and that's all free so if you would like one drop a chakra in the comments now there's a few of you on that have already had this with me we've had some chats about your chakras over the last few weeks so for any of you that feel ready to really step into a place of relief freedom contentment feeling the shifts in your energy right now you're ready to keep moving forward and dive deeper into healings i offer one hour transformation hours now i did them as at an introductory price of 44 pounds for the first month that i offered them I think that was until the end of june i've decided to keep it at that price because we know the world's going crazy and everything's really expensive so i want this to be accessible to you in that i run three or four different scans we dive really really deep um some of you have had them with me already and they really are about you digging deeper and doing a lot more healing and you will start to feel the shifts instantaneously it really really is special they are 44 pounds if you want to have just a one-off session or I put together a healing package. So for those of you who are thinking, okay, I know there's some stuff that I'm carrying. I know there's some work to do on myself. And you want three sessions. Ideally, I set them up to have one a month. But how they're going, they're going more regularly than that. So a few ladies are already having them and they're having them like every two, three weeks. But you get a set of three sessions for £99. So that makes it £33 a session. It just gives you that... That level of commitment, you're going, right, I'm going to pay the £99, I'm going to commit to the three sessions, and you're like, right, let's do this. That's for those of you that are ready. So if you want a free chakra scan, drop chakra in the comments. If you want more information on the transformation hour, just put transformation, the word, in the comments. If you want more info on the healing package, just put the word healing in the comments, or drop them in a message to me, however you want to do it. Do we have any questions before we round up for tonight? Oh, 46 minutes later. Thank you, ladies, for sticking with me and absorbing all this information on chakras. It's going to so help you in understanding yourself, your mindset, your physicality, how it relates to the chakras, how you can make yourself feel better. If, Rebecca, of course, if you feel like later on, oh, I've got a question. You can either come back to the video and drop it in the comments because I hopefully will get the notification and can come back and see it. Or you can just drop it in a message to me and ask away because you might later on start thinking about it and think, oh, does this relate to? Ask me. I'd rather you ask and have the answer than not know. If you decide that you want to have a chakra scan and you haven't put it in the comments yet, then you can just drop it in a message to me. If you feel like any of your friends would really benefit from understanding chakras and learning about them, feel free to add them into the group and tag them in the video because this is going to sit in the group now. I'll pin it to the top so you can see it and you can come and rewatch it if you want to, if you want to go back through and make notes if you haven't already. By all means, you can do that. And like I say, ask questions and I'll come back and answer them. But thank you for joining me. I'll go through the comments. I'll make a list of you that said you want the chakra scan and I will be in touch to get those done with you. Like I say, any questions that come up later on, just let me know. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about your chakras. I guarantee just understanding this information and starting to absorb it is going to start making a difference. Because you'll be like, oh, that relates to that. Oh, I'm starting to understand this now. And what perfect time. It is new moon tomorrow. So perfect time to learn some new things, to set a new intention, to be more aware of your chakras and be able to absorb this information. Because I'm all about, yes, shifting your energy, but also giving you the mindset awareness to absorb it in here. Because this can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So I want you to be absorbing this information too, so you can use it to your benefit. Have a gorgeous, gorgeous evening. Thank you for joining me live, ladies. If you're watching on replay, hashtag replay. Ask questions as you go along. I'll come back and answer them. And I will speak to you all very soon.